Chapter 17 Waiting in the Wings Summary Things are finally looking up for them, so hopefully they'll find just what they need in the junkyard they were told about. After working things out regarding Kachan's new job, Izuku was staunchly ignoring the tug of anxiety he got when he think about Kachan being away every day. The group said goodbye to Ayalan and started on their way to the local junkyard. With some actually good directions, they were easily able to make their way through the wide streets to their destination. They were met with the sight of towering piles of trash. It honestly seemed like no one had even tried to take care of it for a while. Sentients probably just dumped trash in the already overflowing piles without a second thought. But as they entered the dump, they caught sight of a couple scrapped spaceships, just like Ayalan said. But before they could look any further, a pot-bellied furry alien came bounding into view. He had on a grease-stained apron with an army green jumpsuit underneath. Just like Ayalan, he towered over the group. Hey there, youngins, the man greeted. His voice was slightly scratchy, but his eyes were kind and crinkled. Uh, hi, Izuku started. We are wanting to look for a ship to fix. Could you uh, ha- help us? Hopefully the man would be just as nice as Ayalan. So far he seemed kind enough, but... Zuku knew how that could change in a heartbeat with the wrong piece of information. Being discovered as Terrans here would probably be even worse than being quirkless back on Earth. No problem. I've got a couple different ones. What kind are you looking for? The man questioned, his long ears twitching like a cat's. He then started walking down an aisle of junk not looking back to see if the kids followed. But of course, they did. We need a ship that can fit everyone and is good for long travel. May is a good mechanic, but this is her first time fixing a ship. Izuku stiltedly explained. He still wasn't as good with basic as he wanted, but hopefully, if he could get a job in town alongside using the tablet back at camp, he would improve even faster. The man hummed in acknowledgement and continued down the path, his sweeping gaze moving expertly over the sea of scrap until, eventually, he stopped in front of a ship. It was by no means small, but its mass blended in with the piled trash. Izuku had no real reference for spaceship size, but it was probably bigger than a submarine, while nowhere near the size of the warehouse room on the trafficker ship. It looked like it was built for speed and agility. Where there was no need for aerodynamic designs in the vacuum of space, it had many thrusters littering its exterior, though most looked somewhat busted. Overall, it didn't look too beat up. No gaping holes visible, just rust and dents, though that said nothing of its internal mechanics. This right here should suit you nicely. She's... Many a few years out of date, but she's a reliable old girl. Speedy, too, in her prime. The furry sentient said, gazing happily at the beat-up ship. Eight rooms with enough space to live in comfortably, if not a little cramped. Main deck has a kitchen, living area, ship controls, where there are two smaller rooms in the back of her. And of course, a bathroom. Everything you should need. May looked about ready to start repairs now and Izuku could relate. It seemed perfect for their small crew, and he could already imagine drifting through the inky black void of space from in safe inside their own spaceship. But there was still one more thing they needed to know. How much would it be for the ship? We don't have a lot right now. We are hoping to find work soon. We need to get home as soon as we can, but it is very far. The answer to this would either make or break their plan. Maybe there would be a more affordable ship if this didn't work out, but Zuku was already feeling attached. 
If they had to spend half a year traveling through space, he wanted it to be in this. And with a ship like this, it would probably only be about the six month in like their estimate. The man gave a moment to think, staring off into the distance as his ears twitched ever so slightly. Really want to see this old girl flying again. She's in relatively good shape and this top of the line model, she, even if she's out of date. So, even though I'd love for you to have her, the best I could do would be about 650,000 credits. A ship like this would probably run you more like a million two hundred thousand new. I certainly have other ships that cost less, but none of them are anywhere near as fast or reliable. Izuku's heart skipped a beat at the number. How many zeros even was that? But Fastel smiled and spoke. Really? With all the tip humans working, that should only take a couple of months. I don't know how much me and Firebook can help, but we'll do our best. Thank you so much. After a quick sidebar where Fastel explained that credits were about... 6.23 times different from Earth money, they moved on to the negotiations. The man, Mr. Ziantuk, would help provide tools and source parts for repair. He'd also offer to show May the ropes when it came to alien tech in repairing spaceships. So after all the details were worked out, May spoke up, squealing with excitement. How soon can I start work on this baby? She practically shouted. Hmm. If you lock and provide 10% down payment, I can let your holler off. If you want, I could even out fix her up in my spare time. The man offered. Sounds good! May ecstatically replied. And with that, they were off to look for jobs. After only three days, almost everyone had gotten a job. Kotsky obviously had his job at Islands. He had always been a stellar chef, but he was really thriving with the alien cuisine's strong flavor profiles. Though, no one seemed to know what spicy food was, which annoyed him to no end. Ochako had easily gotten a job with a local construction company. Not only had she grown up in the industry due to her parents, but her quirk was perfect. The interviewer was amazed when she showed him what she could do, and hired her on the spot. Denki also quickly landed a job. The power generator was an obvious placement with his quirk, but not in the way one would first think. While well, Denki could certainly produce large amounts of power that would be useful for the company, they were even more interested in his electricity resistance. Most sentients wouldn't even be able to handle an electric current the strength of a joke buzzer, let alone one greater than a lightning strike. So Denki was perfect fit for working in the dangerous generator room. It took a little longer for Mina to find a job than the other three, but eventually she found her place in a popular dance group. Well, popular for the area. Her sense of rhythm, flexibility, and colorful look made her an instant hit within the group. It wasn't quite as high paying as Ochako's or Denki's job, but it was still more than enough. May, on the other hand, was fighting off job offers after she gave a demonstration of her skills at the local science association. All sorts of companies were trying to recruit the young genius, but she eventually settled with a successful smaller company that specializes in up-and-coming technologies. The twins were still sorting through requests for their newly established babysitting services, figuring out how to schedule and organize everything. Turns out everyone wants the communal, child-focused species looking after their kids versus a regular old teen. And Izuku? Izuku still hadn't had any luck. He'd been going out every day just like the rest of them, but he still hadn't found anywhere to work. And it was taking its toll on him. It wasn't easy sitting through job interview after job interview in a language he didn't understand, all while dealing with the anxiety of being away from his friends for one of the first times in months. 
The others had gotten jobs thanks to talents like Mina, May, and Bakugo, while the other two had gotten one thanks to their quirks. But Deku? What did he have? One for All was still locked away, so he continued to be effectively quirkless. And what skills did he have outside of hero work? Sure, he was good at quirk analysis, but it's not like the aliens had any quirks. And other than that, he has thrown his whole life into hero work. And before that, he mostly just focused on school and not getting beat to a pulp at school. What... What good was he if he couldn't even help his friends? He was just back to being a worthless, quirkless Deku. Izuku was snapped out of his thoughts when Mr. Ziantuk nudged his shoulder. You doing all right there, Midoriya? He questioned, concern written on his face plain as day. After yet another unsuccessful attempt at finding a job, Izuku had find him, found himself staring at their soon-to-be ship. Yes, I'm just upset. I still have not been able to find a job to help out. He sighed. Mr. Ziantuk sat down on the gravel ground right next to Izuku. He seemed to be thinking about something. So, not wanting to bother him, Izuku let them slip into a comfortable silence. Eventually, the purple-furred man spoke up. You know, I could use help cleaning up the place. Things are all out of sorts, and it's about time I did something about it. Izuku turned his head and looked at the kind man's amber eyes, hope sparking in his chest. So, what do you say? You want a job here? Can't pay as much as some of your friends are making, but it'll still be good credits. Wouldn't hurt helping you put some muscles on those bones of yours. He laughed. Izuku couldn't help but smile widely, teeth gleaming in the dimming light. A look of shock briefly crossed Yuntuk's face before he broke out into a grin of his own. Not many other sentient shoujo if I bear in their teeth, you know. Most others would be running for the hills at your grin, he teased. Izuku blushed at the comment, having forgotten that most would have taken his smile as a sign of aggression, but it seemed that Mr. Ziantuk's people were much the same as humans in that aspect. It felt nice to be able to smile with someone not in Izuku's little group. Thanks for the reminder, he chuckled. And I would love to work with you. When can I start? At that, Mr. Ziantuk just grinned harder. Be here tomorrow, anytime after sunrise, and be ready to work your Yagros off.